Hi, this is Shadi and today I want to talk about a very inspirational and iconic figure in Judo and the history of Judo in general and one of the last surviving students of Jigoro Kano himself and that is Fukuda Keiko. Now, Fukuda Keiko is uh, not your uh, world champion or all Japan champion or uh, any kind of champion really. Um, her stamp or footprint in the Judo world is very uh, important from several things. For example, uh, really helping to overcome discrimi gender discrimination in uh, the Kodokan and we're going to talk about the several prohibitions against women at that time and uh, also we're going to talk about her life at, in general and how she became the highest ranking female we have in history today. So Fukuda Keiko will teach us a lot of things like I've mentioned competing isn't everything uh, a lot of people have left their uh, print in martial arts you know making other lives better and also you know revolutionizing the art from technique uh, mindset uh, philosophy etc so let's begin so Fukuda was born on April of 1913 and passed away in February of 2013 so that's nearly a hundred years old and she was born in Tokyo Japan and she practiced uh, the arts of flower arrangement calligraphy and tea ceremony very uh, common for Japanese females at that time but she felt close uh, to judo uh, especially with memories of her grandfather Hachino Suke Fukuda which actually one of was one of the three masters of the Tenshin Shinyu Ryu Jiu Jitsu who taught Kano. Now Kano learned from three masters I think I've talked about this in another video and one of them being uh, Fukuda's grandfather so she he she already had uh, Kano's respect in a sense so her brother and mother would take her to watch uh, judo and a few months later she decided to uh, train judo herself and abandoning the uh, typical female practices of that time so she started uh, practicing at the age of uh, 22 uh, in 1935 but the Kodokan in 1926 had opened a female section uh, by the name of Joshi Bu or women section and Fukuda was invited by, by Kano herself because Kano already knew who she was and he had a lot of respect for her grandfather who was not only a jiu-jitsu master but was also a samurai. So in respect to her grandfather, Jigoro Kano took her and invited her to become a member of the Kodokan himself, which was very unusual at that time, but um, it was, you know, respect for her grandfather. So she became uh, a judoka in 1935 but became an instructor in 1937 so just two years into her training and I'm starting to see a pattern here specifically the Japanese training at the Kodokan just two years into their training and they become a shodan or first degree black belt I'm guessing this was the normal pattern at that time uh, there wasn't like a bureaucracy like today you need to pass these katas and these exams and uh, you should have this much competition points so a shodan can drag like five six years just uh, for the requirements alone and not uh, the level so uh, which is pretty uh, dumb I would say uh, judo should only be about meritocracy and you know sure have a few requirements here and there but uh, uh, for example if I don't like I barely compete and it's not my thing you need to have like 200 points of competition so that's insane uh, but I'm guessing back then it wasn't like this uh, it, I think it all started with Kawashi and his uh, colored belt system that all this bureaucracy came into judo but uh, that's a topic for another video uh, so she traveled to the states during the 1960s teaching uh, going back and forth uh, between the states and Japan and uh, she also became a US citizen in the early 1970s and in 1972 she uh, campaigned against the prohibition against women to go higher than Godan or fifth degree uh, black belt so she said quote unquote the Kodokan is sexist when it comes to belts and ranks for women 
so this was her main battle in judo. It wasn't competitions and beating bigger men or uh, sumo wrestlers or wrestlers like the other historical figures I covered. It was mainly about you know establishing women in judo. Uh, so she was only she was one of four to become fifth black belts. Uh, one of them is Noritomi, her senpai, um, and she became the first to become six dan and the first to become Tenth Dan in 2011, just two years before her passing. Uh, so in 1973, she published her first book, uh, Born for the Mat. It's a kata book for women. And in 2004, uh, she published another book, Juno Kata. Juno Kata is the kata you are seeing in front of you being performed by Kano and Yamashita. So she was a kata specialist. She would become a head jury in the kata championships and the member of the kata examination board. She also has her own kata championship, the Fukuda Invitational. So uh, her role in judo was very unique. Uh, it was both theoretical and technical. It wasn't about you know being the dominant champion like you see with others. Um, she helped judo, you know, become more humane and more uh, equal. Um, and this is what I love about judo today. Uh, the fact that, you know, the techniques have evolved so much, uh, you know, relying on positioning, uh, technique, leverage, uh, etc. Uh, it really makes it about what you bring on the mats and not about who you are. For example, Judo does not cater to anyone. Uh, you can be a very good uh, female judoka and beat a male black belt. Uh, Toshihiko Koga, he beat giants. Um, for example, you have disabled or uh, or people who compete in the Paralympics. For example, they are deaf or um, I don't know. They have like maybe a small physical disability yet they can beat uh, fully abled people, body abled people. Um, this is what judo is about. It's about the spirit and what you bring on the mats as far as mindset and technique. It doesn't matter if you are male or female. And I think Fukuda played a huge role in this, um, making it uh, far, you know, equal. I mean, sure, the Kodokan tried to be, make it more equal, you know, in 1926 when they opened a female section, but. Uh, it was still very discriminatory uh, back then. Uh, even now in Japan, you still have, uh, you know, backwards uh, beliefs and discriminations uh, in China, also in third world countries. So her battle in judo was very much needed uh, in the West. It's being shown how uh, her results and her campaigning for equality is shown and it's all about technique and what you bring on the mat um, and I fully agree with that um, this was Shady and thank you for listening